Hi, I'm Brian Frank, and we're sitting here today talking about the five secrets of success for endurance fueling. And this video is secret number three, proper hydration. And hydration is one of the areas along with sodium and caloric intake that is very, very confused. What we normally see in practice is athletes living in a state of dehydration on a daily basis and then trying to massively ramp up their fluid intake in the day or two before a hot event in the hopes that they're going to load water in some way. The problem is our bodies are not set up to work like that. We're not camels, we can't store water, and in fact, changes in fluid intake are very much affecting the body and it's very sensitive. We have to, just like a new set point with our body weight or acclimatization for altitude or heat stress, we also have to acclimatize our body to a level of fluid intake that it will recognize as normal. How much fluid an athlete needs to consume on a daily basis is something that we need to talk about first and foremost. If you are not consuming currently one half to three quarters ounce of fresh water per pound of body weight daily, exclusive of what you use while you exercise and exclusive of all other beverages, you are likely currently dehydrated. If that is the case and you want to be able to tolerate heat stress better on race day, the solution is to increase your fluid intake now. 160 pound athlete, we're talking about 80 to 120 ounces a day, 128 ounces being a gallon. So you might want to work your way up to a gallon a day. However, more importantly, if you're not doing that currently and you have an event coming up, you must stay the course. Maintain your normal fluid intake in the days leading up to an event without drastic increases. You can work on daily hydration after the event, but what we're concerned with now is not super hydrating before the event and flushing all your electrolytes out of your body and confusing your body so it doesn't know what to do on race day. The most important thing to be doing in the days leading up to event is monitoring your urine color. You want to see a nice light yellow hue. You do not want to see clear. If you are peeing clear, you should start taking some electrolytes and start moderating your fluid intake. Now, you haven't been overhydrating, you haven't suddenly superhydrated before the event, so how much do you want to consume during the event? How much you're losing due to heat stress, perspiration, evaporation, and from your breathing is irrelevant. The only thing we're concerned with is how much your body can absorb. And we know from existent research that depending on your body size, you're talking about a maximum of 16 to 24, maybe 26 ounces an hour. Any more than that, you will fill the bladder, you will be jettisoning water prematurely along with your electrolytes. We are interested in consuming as much fluid as our body can actually absorb, assimilate, and utilize. Consistently consuming more than that maximum amount of water will definitely lead to problems. So you have to practice measured controlled fluid intake while you're exercising. Consume just as much as our body can absorb, not as much as we're losing. In colder temperatures, this can often mean very low amounts of fluid intake. So match your fluid losses when you can based on temperature. But when you start getting into these maximum heat stress situations, you're going to have to limit and restrict fluid intake and find other ways to maintain body temperature. Proper fueling means being a good hydrator every day, all day, and then practicing measured, steady fluid intake while you exercise. Do it right, feel right, feel great. You'll have a good time.